All right. Hello. Today we talked about rate of change and how to tell if uh, information made a, a linear relationship. And we said that was going to lead into bigger things and was going to lead into a big part of what made algebra so algebraic. Uh, and really, the point was to get to the idea of slope is very much tied in with rate of change uh, and so we looked at what made a straight line and what didn't make a straight line but really in math we don't care so much about the cases that aren't straight lines because if it's not a straight line you can't do math with it and if you can't do math then who cares so most of the time we're going to talk about things that are straight lines and where this ratio works so we called today we said it was a change in y over the change in x that was our ratio Another way you're going to see this is to say the rise over the run. And if you think of like uh, your grid, like this, when we talk about the y coordinate, y is this axis that goes up and down, right? So it either rises or falls. And then you have x, which is only capable of moving left and right, which is not the order in which I wrote those down, but you get the idea. So it can run from left to right. Okay, so that's what it's just a simpler way of writing this. Mathematically, what we do is we look at one y coordinate and subtract it from another. And we did that today, and then we take the x coordinate, and subtract it from the other x coordinate. Nothing new. And then, since math people are kind of lazy, instead of having to write all this, they write delta y and delta x, where delta in this case is a Greek letter, right? So it's not a triangle anymore. Greek letter delta. And all this means is this means change in something. So when we say delta x, we're really just saying change in x again. That's a different way of saying it. And then all this boils down to just the letter m. And what m represents is the slope. So it's like it's like a full circle, right? It changes this. All this ends up being m, and m is slope, and slope and rate of change is the same. And it's like, wow, look at that. Wow. A little confusing, right? And so let's let's not to worry about this. Let's just work some stuff out, right? Okay. So here's a line, hooray line, and we want to see how x and y change. So if we say we start here. And we end up here. We want to know how far do we rise? Oh, that was bad. How far do we rise? And then how far do we run? So we can see that we go up two and we go over one, two, three. So our slope here, a rise is two over a run of three. So if we said, what is the slope of this line? You'd say, well, it's just two-thirds. That's it. Piece of cake, right? If we try another one. And maybe you could pause this and you could try it on your own, see what you come up with. So pause it right now. Uh, you didn't pause it. Pause it again. Come on. You can do it. Hit the little pause button. It's down here somewhere. Okay. So hopefully you did it and you're ready to look at it. If you didn't, it's okay, because I'm not there to see. So we look, here's where we started, here's where we ended. And we can go either way, it doesn't really matter, but well, let's just say we start on the left. This time, instead of actually rising, we went down, went down three places, so instead of saying three, we can say negative three. And we went over, or we ran, forward two places. In this case, a rise over a run. Let's say negative three over two. Okay. Now, what if we didn't want to go from left to right because we're difficult like that, and we wanted to look at it and say, what if I started here and I wanted to go up here? Well, then we'd say we go up three. But instead of running forward, now we're running backwards, negative 2. 
So in that case, we would have 3 over negative 2. But mathematically, these are the exact same number. And that's why it doesn't matter, because you get the same thing either way. And then we could actually write this, and be all fancy about it, and put the negative on the outside. So you can say this is negative 3 halves. Anyway, you want to write it, all the exact same number. Okay? So this one was negative, so our slope here is negative, but this slope was positive. And can we see the difference, I'm going to get rid of all this, can we see the difference between this line and this line? And actually let's, let's put them together, maybe. Yeah, here we go. Can we see a difference between these two lines? And hopefully you can say, well, if we consider this from the classical reading standpoint of left to right, that this this line appears to be going uphill, and this line appears to be going downhill. And what I always said to help me remember this is I imagine that there was a guy walking on this hill. And we always called him Felipe. I don't remember why we called him Felipe. That's his name. And he doesn't have a face. But he says, hello. Right? So Felipe is walking uphill. Wait, what? how did this work? I forget the story. Anyways, Felipe is walking uphill. We know our slope is going to be positive. Right? He's happy to be going uphill. For reasons I'm not sure about. Now Felipe is going downhill. We say that the slope is negative. Right? So uphill, positive, downhill, negative. I guess up and positive, down and negative. I don't know. Whatever helps you remember. Our third case, which I don't think I actually have a graph of, so we'll just have to draw it ourselves. And let's, let's make all the rest of this smaller here. Okay. So let's say Felipe is not going uphill or downhill. He's just going in a, a straight line. So like this here. In this case, poor Felipe is not going up or down. So we say if the line looks like this, then our slope isn't positive or negative. Our slope is just zero. Right? We see these sometimes. This is a basic horizontal line. Slope is zero. In our last case, hopefully, we recognize what other line haven't we talked about, and that's a line that's like this here that goes straight up and down, vertical line. And you think, how would Felipe walk up this? Well, Felipe is not Spider-Man and does not have rec climbing equipment. Rock climbing. So he doesn't know what to do with this. There's nothing he can do. So we say this slope here is undefined. Well, that's just interesting to know. That'll probably come up later. So, you might want to keep this picture handy or draw it yourself because you should be writing this down. All of this, this, and this, and this, all of it. And I hope you wrote it down because now it's gone. Pow, pow. Okay. Uh, number three, third one here. Let's take a look at what we have here. So, I'm going to say I start here and I'm going to end there. I'm gonna say I'm going down. 3 and I'm going over 3. So my rise to my run. <laughs> Roo. Like the. Oh, I don't remember. Hold on a second. Hey, who was. Who was Roo from Winnie the Pooh? What kind of animal was that? Roo? Yeah, Roo. Roo is from Despicable Me. No, Roo. Oh, Roo is a kangaroo. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, but no, it's run. So this is we went down three, and we ran three. And we know since this is going downhill here that this has to be negative. And then we can simplify this three over three. We can divide both of these by three, and that'll give us one over one. And hopefully we didn't actually have to do all this because one over one is equals one. So our slope here is one or one over one depending on how you want to write it okay so that's how I do it on a graph if you get a graph this is really simple it's just count the spaces that's it alright they're not always gonna be that nice though sometimes they're just gonna give you 
a couple of coordinates and you're like oh that's that's a bummer but we remember all we look for is the change in y and the change in x and we can write this down all formulaically i think that's a word y minus 2 y minus 1 divided by x2 x1 and what this means is since this is a y coordinate and this is a y coordinate we need a way to tell the difference between the two so if I say this is my first point, I would say this is x1 and this is y1, y1. Over here, this would be x number 2 and this would be y2. And now this is just a matter of can we take these numbers and put them into this little uh, this formula. So y2, I said was 3. y1 is negative 1. So 3 minus negative 1 over x2, negative 2, and then x1 is 4, so minus 4. And you're like, oh no, we have to do integers again. It's been like forever since we had to do integers. And we say, tough cookies. If you don't like it, use your calculator. But I know if I subtract a negative, that's the same as adding, and 3 plus 1 is 4. Negative 2 minus 4. Two negatives, both negatives, we combine them together. That makes six, and it stays negative. So we get a slope, let me call this m, of 4, 6, which we can simplify. So we could say m equals 2 over 3, and that is negative. Okay, and we could actually, we could plot this. We got a grid over here. Uh, let's see, let's bring this over. And get rid of all this stuff here. So 4, 1. So over 4, down 1. And negative 2, positive 3. And let's look at what happened. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4 down. Right? 4, negative 4. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over. So a rise over run here is, you guessed it, negative 4 over 6, or just negative 2 thirds. So this way it works. So if you want to plot them, you got a grid, you can always do that. Alright, I don't really like plotting them though. That takes more time than just doing the math. Alright, number 2, 3, 5, 6, 2. Alright, so we start with the formula every time. Well, not every time. At some point, you get so useless, you don't have to write the formula. And then I'm super proud of you when that happens. x2 minus x1. Uh, we can label these. Just to show that it doesn't matter, let's say just for fun, this is x1, y1. And this one here will be x2, y2. Right? Because the order, it's, it's going to give you the same thing either way. <laughs> okay, so y2 is 5 minus y1 is 2 over x2 which is 3 x1 which is 6 alright that's not so bad so 5 minus 2 that's 3 3 minus 6 negative is negative 3 thank you and then we can simplify this 3 divided by 3 we did this already we know that's 1 but one of them is negative so the whole thing has to be negative and there's your answer. That's your slope. That's your rate of change. Constant. Anywhere on this line. Right? Because if you have any two points, we didn't really talk about this, but if you have two points, you can connect them and make a line. If you don't believe me, go and try it. And if you don't believe me, then you can take it up with Euclid, because he's the one who said you can do that. What if you switch the numbers around? What if you switch the numbers around? Do, you still get the same answer? do we get the same answer? Like Like this. Katie's asking, can we switch the order around? So can we say that y2 is 2 and then y1 is 5? And then down here, x2 is 6 minus 3? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look. So 2 minus 5, that's negative 3. And 6 minus 3 is 3. We get the same answers. The only thing that changes is the where the negative is. Or 
if these were both positive, these would end up being both negative. Oh, really? But then a negative oh. divided by a negative ends up being positive. positive anyway. So either way you work it, whichever way you like better, you're going to get the same answer. Because algebra is cool like that. All right, let's do one more because I think I got to go somewhere. I think it's somebody's birthday and I'm supposed to be, uh, I don't know, social or something. All right, let's call this one x1, y1, x2, y2. Please write this until you at least get the hang of it because otherwise you'll make silly mistakes. You put numbers in wrong, the wrong spot, and then you get the wrong answer, and then I can't be proud of you. And all I want is to be proud of all of you. All right, so y2 is 7. y1 is also 7. Uh-oh, something's going to happen here. x2 is... 4 and x1 is 8. Okay, 7 minus 7 is 0. Now, at this point, we're going to talk about why this doesn't even matter. But let's not do that just yet. Uh, that's true, but that's not the case here. So, 4 minus 8 is actually negative 4. So, we have a 0 divided by a negative 4. So, we can actually divide this. Absolutely. Yes, you can. Yes. If I said you have zero cakes, right? Here's your cake. Right? Here's your cake. It's got one birthday candle on it. Right? And then I say, actually, you don't. You have zero cakes. Oh. Oh, indeed. Okay, but what you do have are four people that you want to split your cakes between. One, two, three, and... Four. Okay, all different colors, just for fun. Okay, if you have zero cakes and you want to split them between four people, how much cake do all of them get? Zero. They all get zero cake. Zero. They get no cake. All they get are sad faces. <laughs> Except for Felipe, because we said that Felipe doesn't have a face Aww. for some reason. Right? And even if this is negative, that doesn't really change anything. If we say these are all negative people. They still get no cake. So zero divided by anything will always be zero. Okay? And this is the case, this is where we talked about if the slope is zero, that means the line has to be horizontal. Right? And if you think about plotting this, if y stays the same, the only change is x, and x is only capable of moving left to right, which means we have one point here, one point over there. Okay, and that's it. Look, and there's Felipe, not going anywhere, with no face and no cake. Ha ha ha. Okay, so that's it for extra credit. Um, um, hmm. Let's say. I don't even have an extra credit question. Give them another coordinate. Give them another coordinates. Okay, for extra credit, I just so happen to have one of these. Post your class period, because nobody did it the last time. You, a lot of people just put easy or <laughs> finished, which was not the instructions. <laughs> what you need to do, you need to find this answer, and then in your comment, and so it's going to be like so-and-so, uh, 68 and they're going to leave a comment and you're going to put your class period I'm going to say first period and then the answer where the slope equals something I'm not going to give it away you have to work it out <laughs> all right extra credit for the class that does it uh well, how was my sentence the class that has most correct answers better comments yes that makes sense. All right. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. Follow Katie too.